In the good old days, our synthesizers had real oscillators in them, and we had both kinds, square wave and sawtooth. Then the posh folk come along and they added in triangle and sine waves. Who needs that nonsense? And now they're talking about samplers and wave table and granular synthesis. What's all that about? Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome to Sin Stuff, and I apologize for that. So, granular synthesis, wavetable synthesis, simple sampling. So, we've had sampling forever. It's, it's almost 40 years old. Uh, my second synthesizer ever was an Ensonic Mirage sampler. So, sampling is nothing new. You basically take a recording of something and you play it faster or slower, and it pitches it up or down. Pretty simple. But then we have wavetable and granular synthesis. And I see a lot of uh, misunderstanding, particularly when it comes to wavetable, because people think, oh, well, it's just a sample and you're just playing the sample really fast. Well, not really. So let's do an experiment where we're going to take recordings of a couple different things and then we're going to bring it into a sampler, into a granular synth, and into a wavetable synth and see what the differences are and what the things actually sound like. All right, let's start with finding a couple sounds to record. How about my cat? Do you want dinner? Are you gonna meow for me? You are? Are you gonna meow for me? That's a very big meow. What else do you have to say? Well, that's very interesting. Well, that didn't work great, but uh, after a, a bit of persistence, I did manage to get a, a few good meows out of her. And after running it through some uh, high-pass filtering and noise reduction, here's what I got. All right, so let's try piano. I'm going to put the recorder right on top of this old piano that's uh, not very in tune, and we'll play a C below middle C. All right, so between sample, granular, and wavetable, sample is the earliest and most basic of these, so let's start with sample. To do that, we're gonna use my montage, because the montage has a sample playback engine in it, known as AWM2, and so I've opened my Melas waveform editor for the montage. So let's uh, open up my library. So there, you can load eight libraries into a montage. I have eight loaded already, so instead of creating a new one that I can't fit in there, what I have is one just called Scott Stuff, and it's just things that I throw in there. You can hear, like, I've got uh, Fairlight sound I have in here. I also did a multi-sample on my Korg Poly 6. of just a basic sawtooth. So what we're going to do is import the samples that I've recorded. So let's get the the three cat samples. So there's the first one. And the second one. And also my piano sample. Okay, so let's have a listen to each of these. All right, so here's the first one. And the second one. And then the third one. And then we have the piano. So let's work on, uh, let's say, the, me the first meow. And we'll go into the sample editor. So what this lets us do is define where the start and loop points are of the sample. So if we start playing it and then start with the loop. <laughs> Okay, so there's a good loop point. Let's uh, reverse that bit and let's see what we have here now. That'll do. And what note is that that we're playing? So that's, we hit a C. It sounds more like a G, so I think we should change the root from a C to a G. 
that means it, it will now play in tune. So when I play a C, it should be more or less a C that we're, we're playing. Okay, so we'll save that. And let's go on to meow number two, and we'll do the same thing. And we'll extend that out as a reverse. And what note is that? I think it's a G sharp. So let's exit out of there and we'll say the root of that is G sharp. And let's edit the third meow. Good, and that note. I think we're at G again. So we'll make that a G. Lastly, we have the, oh, and before we go any further, these are not gonna be one shot, they're gonna be looped. So we're just gonna loop these. The piano, however, will make a one shot because it's just a one long note. Now, normally for a piano, you wouldn't do a one shot, but that's how I sampled this. So we're just going to use it the way it is. So let's edit this one and listen to it. Now we could, actually we could put a loop in here rather than just having it taper off to nothing. So if we put our end point more up here, and then our loop point. All right, so let's add a little bit of reverse in there to smooth that transition. Perfect, okay, so there's our piano note. And I already know that was a C, so that's fine. And we're gonna make that one also a loop. So. Now we'll save those waveforms. Next, let's create some performances. So we will create a performance from Meow One. And I don't know why I put it there, but let's put it there. And we'll do the same thing for Meow No. There's Meow Two. And we're gonna create a performance for Meow Three. And we will create a performance for piano. And piano, let's call that old piano. And we're gonna give that a category of acoustic piano. Okay, so there are our performances. Now we can transfer that into the montage. All right, so I've, uh, oops. Oh, <laughs> so I have a friend of mine in Israel who uh, sends me care packages every so often and he knows I love dates and he sends me these these Palestinian dates and they're just oh my god they're the best dates I have ever eaten in my life uh, better than California dates okay so I have loaded my new library into the montage so if we go into our category search and we will select the bank of Scott stuff and we'll see my sound so you, you can see there's my jagged bass which I sampled off this one. A little bit different, but that's where it came from. Uh, Fairlight Sarah is obviously. Poly six is a sawtooth I just sampled off the poly six. Now we have our meows. A lot of background noise in that one. Let's try the next one, see how it came out. It's a little more musical. Let's go to the next one. That one, it sounds like it's gonna work better. Oh yeah. Still a lot of background noise in there. I probably could have filtered out the low end quite a bit more, a little more aggressively uh, to clean that up, but this is just an experiment.
So, I mean, it's playable, it's recognizable as music, kind of. Up top, it gets a little too fast because it's looping too quickly and the sound is out of range. Down below, I guess it could be used as a sound. Anyway, so there's my cat singing. I'll have to get her to come down here and uh, record on my studio mics so I get a better sample. So let's try the old out of tune piano. Oh, it's out of tune. I've got a bit of a click there at the beginning of that sample. I probably could have sampled that uh, or adjusted the, the start on that loop a little bit better. Well, that sounds like a banjo up top. So the thing about piano sampling is you don't want to take one note and sample it and then spread it across the keyboard because pianos have complex harmonics and the harmonics changes in each note. So if you just take a single note and then pitch it up, the harmonics are all wrong because it's pitching all the harmonics up as well, whereas the harmonics have to do with the, the case and the string resonance and so on and, and it doesn't pitch up so it sounds very unnatural. So if I play the C, that's exactly a recording, but if I play a, a G, okay passable, but if I go up an octave, clearly you know there's something wrong with that note. It doesn't sound right. Same thing if I go down an octave or another octave. Not so much audible on the low end, but definitely on the top end. It sounds like a banjo up here. <laughs> anyway, so that's the piano and cat's meow played back on a sampler. Now let's do the same thing in a granular synth. Okay, so I've got a uh, instance of Pad Shop loaded because it's the only granular synth synthesizer that I have. So let's give a listen to um, Meow 3, which I think was the most musical one. All right, so there is our Meow 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that into our granular synthesizer. And let's uh, just lock a key on here. So it's playing. Now if I adjust uh, the number of grains upwards, and we'll start moving these in. And I did some spread, change the position, the offsets. And some randomness into it. And so you can hear that it's it's actually playing the original sample, but it's just taking tiny little slices out of it and just playing some of the slices of the sample out. So you get kind of a grainy sound. Now we can add some randomness into that so it picks different slices each time. We can pick how large each slice is, make the slices larger, and it becomes more like we heard originally. Or we can actually speed it up so we have very short grains. We can adjust the number of grains that are playing, how quickly it's scrolling through them, and where it's actually picking those grains from. We can spread the, the, uh, the different individual grains apart. And as you can hear, you can get some pretty strange sounding effects. And you can get otherworldly sounds that you can't generate with any other kind of synthesis.
Okay, so let's start again, only this time, let's drag the piano into there. Now once again, we've got quite a bit of low-end noise rumble in there from my recording. I should have filtered that before I started, but... And yes, that's a piano sound that we're running through a granular filter. Sometimes when you use granular sounds and then you pitch them way down, you get some really spooky sounds. Very cool. All right, so that's granular. You can see how the samples get sliced apart and played back really quick, little tiny grains of sound being sequenced and randomized and, and just flitted all over the place to, to give you a sense of what the original sound was, but in a way that makes it sound completely different. Now that is Pad Shop, and Pad Shop has so many more capabilities than what I just did here. I was just playing around with some of the, the basic parameters. You can get really deep into the weeds with granular synthesis and it gets kind of crazy. So now let's do Wavetable. All right, so for this, we're going to use the Novation Summit because it has Wavetable's capability and we can load some Wavetables into it. So what we're going to do is find, let's use Meow 3 again, because it seemed to work well. So we'll audio file, and we're gonna pick Meow 3, and we're gonna import into Wavetable. Now you can see it's taken that sound and it's interpreted it and spread it across five different Wavetable entries. And each one of these is assumed to be a single cycle. And if we play down here, you can hear them. If we wanted to, we can go in here and draw on this and we can change the smoothing and you can actually, if you wanted to, you could draw your own wavetable entirely. But what we're trying to do here is show the sample and, and how it, it gets translated into our wavetable. So uh, let's call this cat wavetable. Now we're gonna send that to the summit and we will send it to user wavetable slot number one. And now we sent it over to the summit. So now on the summit, we're going to initialize the patch. We're going to go into the oscillator, select more. And then over here on oscillator, we're going to go and select user. Uh, well, it says cat WT, which is our cat wavetable. So now we are playing the cat sound as a wavetable. <laughs> and we can change the shape of that modulating through those wavetables with the shape knob. And so we could set up say an LFO. So if we go to the mod matrix and let's connect LFO1 to the uh, wavetable. So if we go direct and then the destination is going to be oscillator one shape and the depth, well, let's see. Cool. 
Cool. Okay, so now I've set up the mod matrix on the summit, so the LFO1, uh, when we push into aftertouch, it's going to affect the shape of oscillator 1, which will then give us this sound. So here's our basic sound, and we push into aftertouch. Cool. And that is all my cat singing. <laughs> all right, that's it. I hope you found this entertaining and informative. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, corrections especially, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you have 10 or 15 seconds to spare, could I ask you just to click like on this video? Leave a quick comment down below. Let me know what you thought. I thought the video was great. Hey, I thought it was lacking. I wish you had talked about this. The reason for that is because the more interaction from the users that YouTube sees, the more interest they think you have on these videos. And the more people that do that who have interests in synthesizers, i.e. you, means that YouTube will pick up the fact that people who are interested in synthesizers like these videos, so I'm gonna show these videos to other people who are also interested in synthesizers and more people get to see them. So I'd really appreciate it if you could just take a few seconds to do that. Of course, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, what are you waiting for? Click subscribe. You get notified every time I post a new video. That's it. Thanks for watching.